Hey, welcome to Made For More episode one. I'm your host, Aaron Burke. I'm so glad that you are joining us. And before I get into the content, let me just give a shout out to all of our sponsors. Okay, we have no sponsors. It's just me and a couple of the guys at Radiant in a studio, but I really am glad that you're with us today. I believe this content's gonna help you. It'll help develop you as a great leader. We have two episodes dropping this month and we will drop new episodes on the first Wednesday of every month. So do me a favor right now, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure you subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe right there so that you are the first to get the new content. If you want notes from this teaching, you can share it with your team. You can share it with your friends. It's all found on AaronBurke.com. We're going to get into the topic today because I believe there's two different types of people in every organization. You would fall into one of these two categories. It's the average and the achievers. The average and the achievers. Let me give you the average. The average person does the minimum. They watch the clock. They're easily distracted. They have no follow through. They're working to survive. Then you have the achievers. The achievers go above and beyond. They strive for productivity. They're focused. They do what they say. And they're working not to survive. They're working to make a difference. The average and the achievers. I think you're thinking of people on your team right now. And everybody kind of falls into one of these two categories. So what makes the difference between the two? I think it all comes down to one word that we're going to talk about today called initiative. The idea of taking initiative is the game changer that moves you from being an average person to an achiever, a great leader. So what is initiative? The act of recognizing and doing what needs to be done before being asked to do it. It's the act of recognizing and doing what needs to be done before being asked to do it. And it's a game changer. For any person that wants to be a leader, you've got to learn how to take initiative where nobody's pulling you along. You're running after the vision. Nobody has to continually reignite the passion for that vision. You do it yourself. And really, if you will learn how to take initiative, you will go further in your leadership. So what's the opposite of initiative? It's someone that is has drudgery. They're resistant to change. They're refusing to put forth effort. And they are lazy. And this is not what I believe God wants you to be. And really, I think it could be the very thing that's keeping you from the promotion, from the development of your team, from the growth of your business. So let me just help you figure out how to take initiative. Because I believe this, great leaders are self-starters and self-motivators. They're self-starters and self-motivators. Let me describe these. A self-starter is someone that I see the need and I meet the need. If I see it, I just do it. Here's another one. I know what needs to be changed before I'm told what needs to be changed. They're self-starters. They, they know already in advance what needs to happen. Here's another one. I figure out how to accomplish a task before somebody tells me I need to accomplish a task. This is someone that takes initiative. They are a self-starter. Here's another one. Is that I don't let, let the laziness of others become my excuse for not being productive. So while everybody else might be lazy, I'm a self-starter. I'm going to get myself moving so that I can achieve all that I need to achieve. Then I said, you're not only a self-starter, but you're a self-motivator. So you don't just start well with initiative, but you continue well with initiative. So here's a self-motivator is that I keep the vision in front of me. I'm constantly reminding myself of the vision. I'm, a, I'm my own personal cheerleader. There's many days I have to wake up and nobody else is cheering me on, but I'm motivating myself to make sure that I accomplish my potential. I'm disciplined in work ethic and follow through. And here's the last one as a self-motivator. I don't quit until it's finished. I'm raising four children, about to have my fifth one right now. And that is one of our key phrases we use around the Burke house. We don't quit until it's finished. We do it all the way. Why? Because we are people that take initiative. People that take initiative are great leaders. And great leaders are always self-starters and self-motivators. And I believe not only this will help you in life, but it'll help you become more like God. Really, it's important that we understand that God is someone that took initiative. He developed things way before we even needed them. You got to think, he created continents 
that had no people on them for thousands of years. Why? Because he knew that people would need to eventually be on those places, so he took initiative way in advance. He created things that we didn't realize the purpose of them for a long time. We still don't know the purpose of cats. He created them, and we realize eventually one day we'll figure out why he created those mutant creatures right there. If you don't know me well, I make fun of cats a lot. So we understand God is a person that takes a lot of initiative. That is why he is a great leader, and we are called to be great leaders, and they're self-starters and self-motivators. Here's the ultimate idea. Ready? Is that taking initiative ultimately means taking responsibility for your own success. Say it again. Taking initiative ultimately means taking responsibility for your own success. So I'm going to give you four keys on how to take initiative. Four areas of your life that if you'll take initiative, you'll grow in leadership. It doesn't matter if you work as a teller in the bank, if you're a cashier, if you're a regional manager, or if you're the CEO. I want you to know that if you will apply these four keys, you will go further in leadership because you are taking initiative. Here's the first one is that I want you to take initiative with your boss, or you could put in there your director, your leader, whoever it is, your board, whoever is over you. You will only thrive as much as that relationship with your boss thrives. So a lot of you guys have way too much conflict. You're biting the hand that is feeding you by not taking initiative and not honoring your leader. So I want you to know this, that when I look back at my life, I've thrived in areas where I took initiative with my boss. For six years, I was a youth pastor and kind of an associate pastor under a lead pastor of a church in Pensacola. And I just knew that if I was going to excel in that organization, I was not going to leave it up to him to initiate with me. I was going to do my part to always stay in front of him. So let me give you some keys of what I did that I think will help you. And honestly, out of my best employees I have on my staff, I identified them as doing these things when they take initiative with me. And maybe it's something you need to do with your boss. Pursue one-on-one -on -one meetings. Take initiative by pursuing one-on-one -on -one meetings. You will separate yourself by simply putting yourself in front of your boss more often. You say, well, I'm waiting for him or her to pursue me. You will be waiting for a long time. Instead, take initiative. Remember, it is, it'll help you become a great leader who is a self-starter and self-motivator. By what? Putting yourself in front of them. Here's another one is take initiative by presenting goals to your boss. A lot of people are waiting for their boss to hand down goals to them. I believe the boss's job is to present the vision where it is now your job to present the goals that will accomplish that vision. So what I love is when those who are report to me come up to me and go, Aaron, I've got this goal and this goal and this goal. And they say statements like this. How does it line up and help the vision that is on your heart? I realize, wow, they have taken initiative by presenting goals. Here's another one. Keep him or her updated on your wins and on your hurdles. They want to be in the loop. So keep them updated. A lot of people say this statement and it just drives me crazy. They say, well, I don't want to bother them. They're so busy. Their whole success rides on the fact of you being a success. So celebrate the wins and update them on the hurdles. I am okay with any hurdle in my organization as long as I'm aware of it. I don't have to solve it, but I want to be aware of it. Here's one more thing you can do to take initiative with your boss. You might not have ever thought about it. I'm going to help you. You don't even need to give me the credit for it. Here it is, is ask them about their family or their friends, whoever's close to them or their hobbies. Uh, what I've realized is that my favorite people care about my favorite people or they care about my favorite hobbies. So if your boss likes golf, learn about golf. If they love that NFL team, learn about that team. If they have children, find out their children's names and their children's birthdays. Why? Because it'll help you take initiative and separate you from everybody else. You go, that's extreme. That's the difference between an average and an achiever. They take initiative. Here's the second one, is I want you to take initiative with 
departmental improvements. Whatever department you're a part of, whether you're the leader of it or not, I want to encourage you, take initiative in solving problems. People that set themselves above everybody else are problem solvers. You got to think people that have changed the world simply solve the problem that nobody else was able to solve. And your organization will get better because you become a person that takes initiative by solving problems. Your area and your department should be getting better because you're involved in it. It should be getting cleaner because you're involved in it. It should become more efficient because you're involved in it. It should be getting more organized because you're involved in it. And here's our issue. It's familiarity erodes awareness. Familiarity erodes awareness. So the more we're in it, the less we realize how messed up it is. So you've got to take some initiative to realize, man, if I've been in this for so long, there's probably a lot of things that are wrong that need to be fixed. So how do we do it? How do we take initiative with departmental improvements? Here's what we do. First one is we ask for feedback. And don't wait for people to give you feedback. Take initiative by asking people, hey, what do you see in my department that could change? What do you see that I don't see? We call it our blind spot. What is that blind spot that I don't know I have or the department doesn't know it has? Here's another one. You take initiative by researching better strategies. There's somebody in the world that is doing what you're doing more efficiently and better. I want to know who it is. And if I'm going to be a great leader, I'm going to take initiative to figure that out. Here's another one is continual evaluation of efficiency. What can I do that we've always done, but what can I do better? Or what can I do that I'll save a little bit of money or save a little bit of time? You'll realize that the world is drastically changed in small little increments of efficiency. So you find ways to do it. I'm telling you, you'll be a person that excels. Asking yourself, how can I make it better? I'm constantly evaluating our organization and asking myself, how can I make it better? And then simply this, the last one is take initiative in your department by becoming what I talked about earlier, a problem solver. Don't get frustrated, fix it, fix it. And I love it. Take the responsibility to fix it. I love what Hewitt Cathy says. He says, if it is to be, it's up to me. If it is to be, it's up to me. So I'm not going to leave it to anybody else. I'm taking initiative so that I can solve the problem. When you ignore the problem, hear me out, you lose credibility. You lose credibility because now the problem's not the problem. You're the problem because now you have lost credibility in our lives and in our organization because you avoided something in your department that needed to be fixed. So I want you to take initiative in your department. Here's the third one. If you want to excel, be an achiever, be a great leader, you need to take initiative in organization-wide improvements. So it's not just your department, it's the whole organization. What can we do to make the company, to make the church, to make the nonprofit better as a whole? Even if it doesn't affect you, you will stand out in the organization if you learn to take initiative with organization-wide improvements. The people that have excelled the most in our organization are those that are constantly coming up to me, not just telling me how to make their departments better, but how to make every area better, church-wide or organization-wide or nonprofit-wide. So we, in our organization, realize that there's no area that's off limits. We are all in this to take initiative to make this thing better because when one part of our organization wins, every part wins. So how do we take initiative in the organization? Here's a couple of keys I wrote right there in your notes. It's have the attitude of an owner. You are not an employee, you're an owner. When I worked at 15 years old at McDonald's, they gave me a little pin that says I was part of the Mick crew. You know, I felt like an owner to this. I wasn't just helping with the drive through If there was something going on, I would jump into the kitchen to help them get caught up or there was a spill in the lobby, I'd jump out there and try to mop it up. Why? Because I've always had an attitude that whatever I'm a part of, I'm not simply going to be an employee. I'm going to be an owner of that. And I got promoted quickly. I remember I went from 5 to 15 an hour 
to 535 an hour in my first couple months. I thought I had struck gold at McDonald's, ladies and gentlemen. But it was an attitude of taking initiative that I believe if I would have stayed there, I would have kept climbing that ladder to become an owner. And I think it'll change everything. Here's another way is look at your organization through the eyes of the key customer or the guest. So if you're a nonprofit, look at it through who are you trying to reach? If you're a company, who is the guest that's coming in your door? If you will look through their lens, you will realize, man, there's things that need to change. And that is how you can take initiative because you can say, as a guest walking in here, we probably should fix this. Or as part of our key customer, they're thinking this. And when you fill in that blank, your manager or your director or the owner of the organization says, man, that employee stands out. They're taking initiative and that'll help you excel. Here's the last one with it is that you're giving solid, well thought out feedback to those who need to hear it. So we realize that our organization, if you want to take great initiative, you give good feedback. You do it really well in the life-giving way. We call it the sandwich method. We tell them what they're doing well. Then we tell them what they can fix. And then we tell them what they're doing well. Sandwich it all together. But those who go the furthest in our organization give well, solid, thought-out feedback. They take initiative. They don't wait for other, ever, other people. They do it on their own. Okay, here's the last one. Number four. So let me just recap for just a second. Number one, take initiative with your boss or your a uh, leader or your director, take initiative with departmental improvements, find what in your area needs to change. Remember, if that problem doesn't get fixed, then that's really not the problem. You're the problem. So we need to fix that. Here's the third one. Take initiative with the organization or the company-wide improvements. And lastly, take initiative with personal growth. Nobody else can fix you except for you. And right now you're doing that. You're listening to this podcast. You're sharing it. You're subscribing every month. You're taking notes. Why? Because you want to be better. I believe that's really why you're listening to Made for More. Even the name, you sit there and you go, yes, I am made for something else. I just don't know how to get there. Take some initiative with this. So what do we do? Here's what I do in my life. What is taking initiative with personal growth look like? I'm constantly evaluating where I'm at. I can't change where I'm going until I'm honest about where I'm at. And you have to be honest. Where are you at? How is your physical health? How is your mental health? Are you actually educated right now? Have you gone through schooling? How are you pursuing excellence in every area of your life? Constantly evaluate where you are at. Here's the second one. Create realistic goals. We make sure that these goals are on there that can be achieved within the next season of your life. Our world right now in 2020 at least is changing rapidly. So I'm not making five and 10 year goals. I'm making really short goals right now that I am making sure keep me motivated and keep me having initiative in every area of my life. One of those goals right here is to do this podcast. I'm doing another uh, few other items that God's put on my heart that I think will help me be a great leader. Create goals. Here's the third one is take initiative by continually learning. Read books. Remember every Reader is a leader. When you stop reading, you stop leading. And I want to challenge you, be a reader. I'm always trying to read a book that is helping me spiritually and another book that's helping me in leadership. So I would encourage you, be a leader, constantly grow. And the last one is simply this, and I know it might give a little pushback, but we're going to talk about taking initiative and I'm going to challenge you. So here it is, is stop dreaming and just start doing some of you guys dream all the time. You've got a new idea every week, a new plan every month. You've tried about 18 different diets because you keep dreaming about the next one. Just stay consistent. Do. And those who dream are usually overtaken by those who do. Let me say it again. Those who dream are usually overtaken by those that do. So I'm not saying don't dream big. Of course, dream big. But put some action behind it. I believe this, and I'll close with this. The difference between those who do something and those who don't do something is that those who do something, do something. Let me say it one more time. The difference between those who do something and those who don't do something 
is that those who do something, do something. You are made for more. How do you get there? Take initiative. I'll see you on the next episode.